Here we are on the cusp of an entirely new era in the digital advertising and marketing space. And looking back over the last 15 years, it's been a hell of a ride. Yeah, so I guess, you know, this is kind of for me where the story starts with the first uh, Johannesburg Biennale art exhibition back in 1995 when I kind of came here not having any idea what the web was. We had to build this website, I don't know anything about this. So I used to spend my time learning HTML and then copying and pasting code of other people's pages and trying to, you know, code a little bit of, I think of the pull thing, and whatever. The thing I was impressed with it was you weren't like typing something, you were like pinging the computer or something. And I was like, <laughs> wow, he's, he's hacking. <laughs> I was he's like, he's a hacker. Awesome. You were in mobile already in 95. 94, really? yeah. January 94. Oh. We had uh, three base stations and Nokia 1011s and 2110s. But how is that possible? <laughs> you're, you're younger than Jared, aren't you? That's assuming that I finished university. Ah, okay. <laughs> Which you I did, was, 17 was, years ago. I was, uh, yeah, I was expelled from university, so... Okay, it so was, you can start working <laughs> earlier. Um, and listen, this may be a completely unfair portrayal, but as I remember it, you had these incredible skills. You were like making stuff that actually people are now getting excited about on the internet. But you were doing it all on, on CD-ROM and actually had no real concept of the internet. It was like, you, like the internet was this other silly thing that people were working on. That's 100% true. <laughs> <laughs> I was working at the Arcade Bazaars, as you do when you're still at high school, and my ex-math teacher, who had left and joined a multimedia-based training company, said, oh, you want to come and do some design work there freelance? So I thought, well, that's great. It's got to be better than working at the Arcade Bazaars. I was a, a CD-ROM salesman for Blue Moon. Then one day, in our interactive department, the programmer decided to leave. The guys basically said, look, Jock, how about you? Can't you kind of help us out? And at the time I said, well, geez, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to try anything. The first experience I had with being in the, really in the internet was a, a telephone call I received when I was in London in December of 1996. I was in a, a dodgy house with 17 people in Wilson Green when Dave Shackleton uh, phoned me and said uh, that MultiChoice just bought this small internet company, would I like to be part of the team? And proceeded to form MWeb. I started my career in marketing and after kind of half completing an IMM, so I wasn't really sure of what I wanted to do. And um, I discovered the internet in about, I think, 1996 and uh, started working uh, with an agency called Tinderbox, who are one of the pioneers of their day. And, and as soon as I got exposed to the kind of work that they were doing, um, I immediately knew that I had to be there. My interest in the internet can probably be traced back to um, a great William Gibson novel called Neuromancer. I started working on my own kind of cyberpunk sci-fi novel and I realized that if I wanted to write a, a cyberpunk novel I needed to have more access to the, the kind of cyber world that Gibson refers to. So I went to the internet solution that had just started and became one of their very first, if not first, um, private dial-up users. So this building is one of the key locations in the history of the internet in South Africa. It's where the internet solutions had their first major data center and a lot of it all sort of started and, and ended here. So the other important thing about this building is where I met Dave, Crazy Dave. He worked for me at Striata in the International uh, Business Development Unit. Okay, come on. I mean, I remember Netscape before Explorer even appeared. I mean, yeah, it was uh, the Netscape, the kind of pre-Internet Explorer days were actually, I think, were the most exciting. I remember, I don't know if you remember on, on the <laughs> Netscape the browser, there was that big N with this yeah. like thing yeah, moving around. around as well. So I, I, Tim developed this sort of gesture. <laughs> I remember walking into the office at VWV the one day and he looked completely sort of, you know, um, freaked out. I said to Tim, what's wrong? And he turned around to me with these like big eyes and he went like this and I knew he meant the internet was slow. <laughs> <laughs> So I went to VWV and I said, you know, why don't we take this thing called the web and actually offer websites, offer on online presence to some of your clients. And they said, you know, great, go ahead. So they put me in a little back office and they gave me the opportunity to go out and pitch their clients. Um, 
And amazingly, their clients very quickly said, yes, great idea, we want to be on the internet. Of course, I then had to um, confront the fact that I had absolutely no idea how to build a website. So I started calling around Johannesburg, frantically trying to find people. I came across a little company working out of a, a back room in a garden cottage in Auckland Park called Jouissance two young people, a girl called Michelle Son and her partner called Jared Sinman. And I managed somehow to convince them and cajole them to um, throw their lot in with me at VWV to use their web building abilities um, to deliver on these client promises that I've made. So you have to remember this was a, a this is before Yahoo did their first IPO. This was uh, before the word internet meant anything to anybody. Uh, it's even difficult for us to remember what it was like before things like email were commonplace. It was a decade before Facebook even existed. Um, we were like Neil Armstrong stepping out onto the lunar surface and we were just imagining the worlds that we were going to be able to build there. So I'd be hanging around uh, the, the VWV offices um, in, in those days, which in fact were the, uh, the projection uh, room of the, of the auditorium. That, that, that was the VWV interactive office. Um, and there were two people there. Um, uh, well, there was Jared, there was Michelle Son, and then there was this other guy who walked around with two big round earrings. This was Jason Zanopoulos. And I remember in uh, one of our first client meetings with a guy called Peter Fleck at Rangold, um, we sat down, I think it was myself and Jared, and he, he turned to, to me and he said, where's the pirate? I want to speak to the pirate. <laughs> that was actually quite an apposite image because he was out there um, sort of stealing ideas from wherever he could find them. And uh, I remember compiling a, a, a book, a flip file, a big flip file of absolutely every article that he could find in every newspaper, every magazine, local, international, um, anything to do with the internet. You know, gather as much information about this thing. We know it's going to be big. If we can just prove that we know a little bit more than the next guy, um, that's going to be a fantastic success. But you guys in the early days were quite separate as a yeah. division. Yeah. I remember um, very early on Tians being very skeptical about the internet stuff and then we sold um, the SMLB site uh, to, what was his name? Clive. Clive, Clive McLean. Clive McLean for like 35 grand and I remember Tians going okay and then the SAA site, I think, was before we merged. Yeah. And that was like 300,000 yeah. rand. And I remember Tians going, Boing! <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely, yeah, you know. That's and it. I they were the first to persuade very large organizations to allocate very large budgets to web design. And to us at the time, that was outrageous because we knew that any 13-year-old kid could design a website. But of course, there was a large gap between the website that a 13-year-old kid designed and one that VWV designed. So my memories of them were that they were very innovative, very progressive and almost ahead of their time, to be honest. The internet was absolutely untamed terrain. And we were like uh, we were like hooligans. We were like hooligans that were let loose um, in an empty field, and we wreaked havoc. I remember smoking a lot of cigarettes, um, and um, and in most in a lot of cases uh, drinking a lot of wine, and coming up with absolutely wildly impractical ideas for the brief that the client had given us. <laughs> What is it that VWVs actually does? Um, they're a personnel agency, aren't they? <laughs> they hire a bunch of stuff, set it out, knives and forks, they commission stuff. What they do is they create a fuck up <laughs> and do it very well. <laughs> Have a lot of fun in your cases. It was lots of fun, lots of energy, lots of excitement, big ideas. In the early days, it was just fun, it was mad. We could do anything and we can get away with it. And there were a range of, of very, very creative agencies, very, very rich media with no real value and no real reach in the web at the time. We made huge mistakes and at the same time we made massive profits on projects. It didn't take long for uh, the guys with the real money to spot the opportunity too. Um, Dimension Data, uh, bought out internet solutions and made Ronnie and Dave and the rest of those guys very wealthy men. Um, and Prime Media and Datatech spotted a similar opportunity and convinced all of us at VWV Interactive that joining with them was going to give us a chance to really take over the world. 
um, and they did one other thing as well. They persuaded Jason to leave the kids at VWV Interactive um, and join them on a quest for something even bigger. I was approached by Prime Media and asked to take their, um, their primary internet asset, iFrica.com, and list it on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And so we had 60 days to take iFrica.com and half a dozen other Prime Media companies, form them into a new business that we called Metropolis, and list it on the Stock Exchange. Metropolis was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. I think that the, uh, it was at the time where there was an amazing energy in the internet space, it was the first corporate entity that was trying to make a business out of content. We were still at VWV when you were, you were doing To be honest, we had no idea what you guys were doing in Metropolis. Really? I, I tried to understand your business so many times. And I had no idea. I remember Kevin and I kind of just thinking, yeah, we had no idea what you guys were doing. We just saw this huge thing like growing. And we, you know, we could never, I never could have grasped what, you know, I'd spoke to Tim and, you know, I just could never really grasp what you guys were doing. We thought that it, it might have been a, a good idea, but we didn't know what that good I idea have was. I you and told you about it. Um, and now we did, and we did your website for you. We did the Metropolis website. So we gave you some work. Yeah, he tossed us a, yeah, it. threw us a bone. <laughs> When I think back on the internet space in South Africa in the 90s, it, um, the image that comes to mind is of a naughty little kid um, blowing a, a bubblegum balloon. You know, we could own the world and that bubble just got bigger and bigger and bigger. But as it got bigger, you can see in the kid's eyes, he knows this isn't going to last forever. But, you know, you can't stop. You're in it. And then, poof, it bursts and he ends up with gum all over his face. It was a dot-com boom and we saw our value go through the ceiling and it was a dot-com crash and we saw our value go through the floor. VWV pretty much collapsed uh, in a heap at that point. And, and actually a lot of di the original digital agencies, the, the Electric Oceans, the, the VWV Interactives, the tools, the you name it, had pretty much fell apart at the, toward the end of the, 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 the 90s. So we, we were in this uncomfortable position at VWV and I think that, that the decision was made, um, in fact it was made for us because Mark told me to fire Jared. So it's like cutting off your arm, you know. Business kept running aground, it kept, you know, there was a huge disagreement about, you know, he kept wanting to retrench and cut things and do this and do that and we just didn't agree with his strategy. And Kevin was like, really, this is it. Like, we actually have to leave now. That's it. That's the choice we have to make. What he did is he took off our hands a really broken business. Yeah. And he let us, with a totally clean slate, start again. We applied a lot of the learnings from our early years to Cameron. We didn't make a lot of the same mistakes that we had um, made at VWV. We focused on technology mostly. So we built a content management system. We never got bloated. We never got too egotistical, we never got too arrogant, and it's kind of taken us to where we are today. I had already decided that I was going to start my own mobile and social media agency, and it was literally a trestle table in the bedroom. And then, very, very fortunately, in, in um, January of 2007, I got a phone call from someone at Standard Bank who said, we hear you can help us, please come and see us. It was out of the blue, and it was a, a very fortuitous phone call because that's really what got Brandish going. At that point I realized that what I knew was something that people would be prepared to pay for and that was really the beginning. I joined Stonewall as a new business uh, development lead. They had gaming as their core business offering at the time and um, the, the biggest client that they had was Forward Slash which was about 70% of their revenue. One day they decided to go in-house and launch their own studio, so 70% of the revenue walked out the door. And it was incumbent on me to start generating corporate client work. And I just felt that you know, because of the contribution that, that we were making, that I needed to see an upside. And for me, that upside meant some kind of stake in the business. Jacques, and Adam and myself, we did a management buyout and then rebranded it as Stonewall Digital Marketing. So I think the last 10 years have actually been about... Um have been about solid rebuilding. You know, the industry grew really quickly and it exploded. Um, and the people who remained behind were the ones who were prepared to dig their foundations deeper, to lay thicker bricks, to put more cement between them, and to build an industry that was robust enough 
to be more than just a novelty, to be more than just another flash in the pan. And those guys are now my colleagues in Native and I'm proud to be a part of building this with them. The old style agencies have to give way to new style agencies. They have to become full service digital agencies that understand every element and how those elements fit together, but also how they integrate with traditional marketing. I'd love my daughter who's seven months old now, you know, when, when she gets to 10 years old or whatever, she goes like native, that's, those are those people that, that are doing insane stuff, you know, they're basically just, just like the NASA of digital in South Africa, they, they're creating compelling, attractive, visually uh, groundbreaking work that really just cuts through clutter.